from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017. Brought to you by HGST. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at NAB 2017, 100,000 plus people running around the Las Vegas Convention Center, north, south, east, west, upstairs, downstairs. I'm joined by my co-host for the week, Lisa Barton. Lisa, have you ever seen anything like this? I haven't, Jeff, it's incredible. Just the buzz that's here, the uh, two miles I walked to get here. <laughs> and that's just from the front door. Exactly. <laughs> The amount of technology that is here, and the everything about the, the MET effect, the MET effect, the convergence of media, entertainment, technology, we're living it literally, even just in our studio alone, it's very exciting to be here. It's, it's kind of an interesting contrast, because on one hand you have this bunch of super high-end gear here, there's a bunch of green screen sets all over the place that are you know, really top end. At the other end though, you have kind of this democratization of distribution. Yes. The studios no longer hold the, the keys to the kingdom and I just heard that, that actually Netflix is the biggest movie or uh, production house going anymore. So the industry's changing a lot, but here right now, if you're a gearhead, if you're a video gearhead, this is a place to be. It is a place to be, but you, you're right about the transformation. The interesting concept behind MET is this convergence of things that used to be distinct. Um, so not only are, only are we seeing this convergence, but the at the nucleus of this media transformation is content. And you talk about Netflix, you talk about content proliferation, everybody's generating content. Right. Um, so many different platforms that are generating content, and these organizations, whether they're filmmakers or big studios or broadcast news, has to be able to find where the audience is, deliver content that's relevant to them. You know, before, back in the day, filmmakers in Hollywood, this, this was a qualitative sort of um, assessment of what people liked and, and where to deliver it. Nowadays, you mentioned Netflix, the Netflixes of the world know so much about all of us that are using this streaming service. Right. And so it's very much a data-driven um, experience that delivers content. That oh, I think Jeff might like this on Netflix, or Lisa might like this. So it's interesting that with the audience in control, really very empowered, how technology can really help enable filmmaker studios, writers, news broadcasters to be much more data driven. So I'm excited to hear about machine learning, artificial intelligence, how all of this data is being stored taking advantage of the latest technologies. Right. Because the, the, cause the consumer has so many choices, they have so many options, that if you don't know who your audience is and get your product to that audience, the chance of you holding them is pretty slim. It's Absolutely. no longer just four, four channels or even hundreds like there used to be on early cable days. Now it's literally thousands of options that are one swipe away, so you really need to engage with your, your audience. And, and there's some talk about that. Actually, I think we've got a guest later today who will be talking about kind of a little bit more sophistication about audience identification and, and getting in contact with that audience. Because if you don't, there's just too many choices. There are too many choices. Additionally, one of the challenges that, that all of us that are cord cutters uh, deliver to, especially like traditional news, is they've got to find us where we are. You've got to deliver the right content, monetize the content, and there are new business opportunities, there's new revenue streams that can be generated there, and finding them and delivering that relevant content is key. Another thing that's interesting is, you know, we talk about security. Jeff and I were just at AWS um, Summit in San Francisco last week, and we think, well, security with respect to public cloud now isn't nearly the concern that it was in the beginning, but we look at, at the entertainment and media industry, and just a few months ago, there was um, leaked screeners of La La Land, the near best picture winner from a few months ago, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of data that show that things that are leaked online like that can actually dramatically um, impact, negatively impact uh, box office sales. So cybersecurity is um, a very, very crucial element that all of these media and entertainment companies need to design for. It's really sort of becoming a creative problem. So I'm very curious to talk to, we've got an expert on uh, a little bit um, later on in the show from a security company would love to get his perspective on how do media and entertainment companies really co transform their culture so that cybersecurity is really woven into the fabric of what they're doing. Right, right. It's a lot more than just uh, DVDs being copied overseas, right? It is. <laughs> 20 years after, after uh, Napster, piracy, even on Netflix, is still a problem. Absolutely. All right, Lisa Martin, we got three full days. We're excited to be here. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. 
Stay tuned, we've got a wall-to-wall -wall schedule. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.